I'm Dr. Priscilla Fowler, and I'm an ophthalmologist specializing in cornea and external disease at the UAB Department of Ophthalmology at UAB Callahan Eye Hospital. I'm going to talk to you today about the red eye and what primary care physicians need to know. I'm also going to go over a few points to remember and give you some helpful hints as to when you should refer a patient. I'm going to do this by illustrating three short cases of actual patients who presented to me after having been seen by a primary care doctor either in an urgent care setting or in a clinic. Red eye is a common condition presenting to primary care doctors, urgent care centers, and emergency departments. The history and initial presentation are often the key to diagnosis, but a careful ophthalmologic exam can be extremely helpful as well. The red eye can be a sign of a sight-threatening condition or even a life-threatening condition. Our first case is a 30-year-old female who presented to her primary care physician with a one-day history of a red eye. She had a history of contact lens wear and presented with mild discomfort but normal vision. This was diagnosed as pink eye and she was given topical antibiotic drops. Her eye probably looked something about like this when she presented to her primary care doctor. So when is this pink eye or viral conjunctivitis and when is it something else? Well, viral conjunctivitis is probably one of the more common things we see in our offices. It presents usually unilaterally, but can often move to the other eye. It has a watery discharge with minimal mucus, although patients will present complaining of morning mattering of their lids where they're stuck together. It's often associated with a concomitant upper respiratory infection, including a sore throat, and it generally resolves within one to two weeks. Patients often say that they have others in the household who've had a similar illness or they have small children at home. The treatment for viral conjunctivitis is frequent preservative-free tears, an ocular decongestant such as NAFCON A, cool compresses, and if the patient's not better or they're worsening within two weeks, they should be seen by an ophthalmologist. It is not usually treated with antibiotics because this is typically viral. So our goal is to avoid harmful treatments. Antibiotics are not necessary for viral conjunctivitis and often they can cause more harm than good. We see a lot of antibiotic resistance because of overuse of antibiotics. We now have community acquired methicillin resistant staph aureus. We also see a lot of allergic reactions. Uh, in patients treated with gentamicin, they often come with an allergic reaction. They also can have toxicity to the drops called medicamentosa. Additionally, topical steroids are dangerous. This can worsen conditions such as herpes simplex keratitis, fungal keratitis, and acanthamoeba keratitis. The patient followed up one day later with worsening eyelid edema, eye pain, and mild decreased vision. She was then given a prescription for oral antibiotics and asked to follow up in one week. She subsequently presented to the eye emergency department one day later with extreme pain and vision loss, and her eye looked like this. So what is this? Is this a bacterial keratitis? Is it acanthamoeba keratitis? Or is it herpes simplex keratitis? Or is this pink eye? Well, this is a bacterial keratitis. This is a severe bacterial keratitis, which is often associated with contact lens wear. We often see pseudomonas, but the initial treatment uh, for this patient would be diagnostic scrapings to try to determine the um, offending organism, and then treatment with broad-spectrum fortified compounded antibiotic drops that have to be specially prepared. These drops are given hourly around the clock, and this requires pretty intensive treatment. Unfortunately, this patient at the very best is going to be left with a severe scar and may require corneal transplantation later. This is something that could have been avoided if this was detected earlier. An early slit lamp exam can detect an early bacterial keratitis, and we can often avoid a situation like this. Case number two is a 26-year-old female who presented her primary care physician with a red, painful eye. This was also diagnosed as pink eye, and the patient was given topical antibiotics. She developed worsening pain and redness over the course of the next week. She also perhaps presented with an eye that was somewhat like this. But a week later, when she presented to the eye emergency department and we lifted the eyelid, we saw something that looked like this. So what is this? Is it a bacterial conjunctivitis, a scleral abscess, or is it a viral conjunctivitis or pink eye? Well, this is actually a scleral abscess. 
This is a methicillin-resistant Staph aureus scleral abscess. We determined this by taking the patient to the operating room and doing an exploratory surgery to remove a portion of the abscess, send it for culture and to pathology. At the time of surgery, the abscess looked somewhat like methicillin-resistant Staph aureus just because of its behavior, and vancomycin was injected into the eye and into the subconjunctival space. Fortunately, this patient resolved and maintained good vision, but this could have been a much worse outcome had she presented any later. Anterior segment infection with methicillin-resistant Staph aureus are on the rise. We see bacterial conjunctivitis, bacterial keratitis, dacryocystitis, preceptal and orbital cellulitis with these resistant organisms, and these require vancomycin. Our final case is that of a 35-year-old mother of three who presented to an urgent care center with a two-day history of eyelid edema and redness of her left eye without vision loss. This was diagnosed as pink eye and the patient was given a prescription for Bactrim. She was not given any instructions for follow-up. She had worsening eyelid edema over the course of the next few days. She became concerned because the eyelid was closed and her vision was decreased. She presented to an ophthalmologist for evaluation. At the time of this eye examination, her vision was down to light perception, which is a severe decline in vision. She had a complete ptosis of her eyelid. She had a third nerve palsy, and she also had a central retinal artery occlusion. This is a severe problem, so she was immediately sent to the emergency department for neuroimaging and admission to the hospital. And this is what she had. And you can note here that there's a large abscess in the superior orbit. Um, this was coming from the frontal sinus, and there was a mucosal present, causing an orbital cellulitis. So is this preceptal cellulitis, orbital cellulitis, or an orbital neoplasm? This is orbital cellulitis. This patient required emergent drainage of the abscess and had resolution but had permanent vision loss from this problem. Perhaps if we had detected this earlier at her initial presentation, we could have prevented the vision loss. Orbital cellulitis. So an orbital abscess is life-threatening. Orbital cellulitis tends to be more common in children. It's often associated with a sinusitis, usually of the ethmoid sinus. Um, children can develop subperiosteal abscesses, which are life-threatening and very dangerous. Um, these often require hospitalization and IV antibiotics and these often require emergent surgical draining, like in this patient. The three cases I presented are not the only causes of a red eye, and there are many other causes. This talk is by no means comprehensive. Other causes could include scleritis or episcleritis, iridocyclitis, endophthalmitis, and chronic ocular surface disease, such as dry eye disease or allergic conjunctivitis. When should you refer a patient? Well, any patient with eye pain and vision loss warrants a prompt referral. Uh, the Eye Emergency Department at UAB Callahan Eye Hospital is available 24 hours a day for such patients in this setting. You should also consider an ophthalmologist who is a medical doctor expertly trained in medical and surgical care for these patients. So our take-home points today are that a red eye is a common presenting sign to the primary care physician. It is impossible to adequately diagnose these patients without a careful ophthalmologic exam, especially a slit lamp biomicroscopic exam. Commonly prescribed therapies can be harmful, such as antibiotics and especially steroids. And this may be the sign of a sight-threatening or even a life-threatening condition. So it's important to determine when to refer these patients and seek specialty care.